to introduce you more than a year ago. He hails from Kamloops and is a writer and a vocalist. He's going to be reading his writing and doing some vocalizing for us. So, uh, I don't know what else to say. He looks crazy. Nick Pochain. Thank you very much. So I'm Nick Pochain, and I will be reading you on page 36, No Real Cause for Alarm. It was a story written about five years ago. It's essentially uh, a result of culture shock from moving to a small town to a large town. And I was uh, shocked and disgusted at the way that uh, people are so disconnected from each other here. Uh, particularly in the business district, the upper class, namely. So uh, this is my response, a very nihilistic tale from my journeys in Vancouver. So, allow me to begin. I woke up feeling like a million dollars. I had a delightful breakfast. I put on my best suit and left the house in ecstasy, knowing that today I would be making more money. I walked onto the lobby of my high-rise. I did not greet the lobby attendant. I walked down the sidewalk towards the business district, where I will go to make more money. More money. I ignored everybody in my path, and they politely did likewise. I love it when everybody just keeps to their own affairs. Personal contact can be rather unpleasant. On my travels, I eventually come to a crowded intersection. People were passing in waves, rolling in all directions, cars crisscross between the gaps of moving flesh. To my left was a young man in a suit, rather like mine. To my right was an attractive young woman with blonde hair and an athletic build. From behind I heard the steady clattering of metal and a trail of cuss words that I recognized instantly. It was a crazy homeless man struggling with a shopping cart. Swearing at the world, blaming everyone else for his problems. Fuck! Shit! I hope you all die, you fucks! Piss! He sneered. Everyone around me became somewhat uneasy. We all did our best to pretend he didn't exist. But just like a washed pot never boils, an unwashed infection never heals. He continued to torment us. As if you were completely oblivious to the presence of the crowd, the crazy homeless man had the nerve to bulldoze his way through. Out of my way, you assholes! screamed the man. People let out little yips as they jumped out of the way. Although the light was red, the cart-pushing vagrant kept on through, stepping off the sidewalk and into traffic. Cars blared their horns as they careened by, missing him by inches. You fucking bum! yelled out one of the passing motorists. Fuck you! fumed the hobo, momentarily abandoning his shopping cart to chase the insult hurling driver. That moment of neglect was enough, as the cart had begun to creep its way downhill, picking up momentum after a few meters. By the time the man turned his attention back to the shopping cart, it was too late. He scrambled down the street after it. The light turned green. And we all started to cross the street. <laughs> Curious to see how the situation was going to develop, I quickened my pace a bit. So did some of the others. The homeless man was running furiously after his cart. He was only about a meter away from it when it went over the next curb and into traffic again. Without even looking, the man plunged headlong after it, directly into the path of a red minivan. Even from as far back as I was, people could still hear the sound of crushing bone. Brakes squealed as the man's lifeless body flopped from the hood of the vehicle to the pavement on the street as he barrel rolled across the ground until all inertia had left him. We all ran to the scene, congregating on the corner of the intersection. The man's driver's side door opened up and out stepped a middle-aged woman with glasses and a flowered blouse. My God, she whispered. Her lips quivering. What have I done? At this time, all traffic had come to a halt. Everyone's eyes were on the road. It seemed like nobody knew what to do about the broken heap of skin splattered on the street. I'm a doctor! shouted a woman in a black raincoat. She ran across the street and knelt beside the fallen man. Oh! she said in surprise. The crowd looked at her with anticipation. 
It's a bum, she cried. It's just a bum. Uh, uh, a bum? sputtered the woman in the flowery blouse. She dried her eyes with a handkerchief. A fucking bum, said a stocky man in a red sweater. He shook his head. It's just a bum! Joyfully proclaimed the child, informing everyone around of the good news. Everyone's face visibly brightened when the words reached them. A group of Japanese tourists all started cheering and taking pictures of the splatter marks on the asphalt. The cars started moving again, and people went back about their business. I closed my eyes and let out a puff of air, glad to know that the tense situation was, after all, no real cause for alarm. Now that's a pretty pessimistic and xenophobic story. So in response to that, this rampant individualism that separates us, that dilutes the love of the planet, and the delusion of separation of self, I'd like to respond with a song called Human Anthill, a song that celebrates collectivity where the sum is greater than the parts, or parts are greater than the whole. Please stand by. We do this. There we go. Can you not feel the thickness of our collective presence? We're all just tiny creatures in the grand scheme of things.